Our world right now holds approximately 7 billion people with their own unique cultures, religions, and traditions. However, we can all unite and relate as we all speak the universal language of water. A, water, a glass of water can tie any two people together because we all know and understand the necessity of it. Water is a fundamental human need. Mankind would have never evolved into modern humans as we know it without it. Where there is water, there is life. Today, our world is experiencing a tremendous human rights crisis. It is estimated that 43.7 million people have been displaced worldwide by the end of 2010. The majority of these people are displaced because of conflict, and we see that much of this conflict is created by oppressive military regimes that take away human rights through such tactics as human trafficking, imposing starvation, and blockading foreign aid, just to name a few. This kind of oppression flourishes where there's a lack of education. When people don't have an education, they don't know their human rights. When they don't know their human rights, they don't have a say in their lives and are simply fighting for their everyday survival. Africa currently has 16 civil wars, the highest rate of interstate war in history. And out of the 75 million children worldwide, 70% of that number is in sub-Saharan Africa, where we see the most human rights abuses. Education is key in eliminating many of Africa's issues. So why don't these children in Africa have the opportunity to get an education? Let's get back to that. I want to start with the story. Several years ago, while I was in high school, actually at this very high school, I read a book about thousands of orphan boys who were about ages five to seven who walked a thousand miles to find refuge in Ethiopia. They were fleeing the conflict in Sudan. I eventually got to see three of them speak. I met them and got to know them personally. And then their stories became stories that I couldn't unlearn. I knew I had to do something. I felt responsible. One of the most moving stories the Lost Boys told me was, while walking through Africa, moving from refugee camp to refugee camp, they saw that the people with the education were the ones who were comfortable and well off. They had a saying, education is my mother and father because with the loss of their parents, education was the only thing that would help them and guide them. So when they reached Camp Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya, they had two choices. They could either go to school and survive off half of a cup of cornmeal a day, or they could go and try to find some work so they could get a little bit of money for some more food. Even though they were starving and saw black in their eyes while they were trying to read in school, the boys chose education because they knew the future that it would bring. So. I wanted to help the Sudanese children obtain their education, but I still wasn't quite sure why didn't they have the opportunity. Was it war? Because there was little I could do about that. Poverty? Could I really have an impact? So I asked the Sudanese. They told me that every day women and children must walk several miles to find water in scorching hot temperatures. This water is often found in mud holes shared with animals. The children, especially the girls, can't go to school because otherwise the people in the village don't have water. So tackling the lack of education problem meant tackling the water problem first. I was daunted by the immensity of it all until I discovered an organization called Water for Sudan. Water for Sudan is founded by Salvadou de Los Boy himself, who goes into remote villages of southern Sudan and builds and maintains wells there with the donations that he receives. So then I went to my high school and my community and started spreading awareness about the issue of water and also other issues going on in Sudan. And then I was eventually able to mobilize my fellow students into uh, creating the Save Sudan Club, where we also worked with the Lost Boys in the San Diego community. Eventually, we were able to raise enough money to build and maintain some wells in the remote village of Wau in southern Sudan. As you see here, um, back here, we got the name Canyon Crest Academy engraved in one of the wells. Another amazing story that came out of this well was after the well was built, 
um, or before the well was built, there was a school underneath the shade of a tree with only 60 students attending. And then after the well was built, it transformed into a brick building holding 850 students. I was so amazed at the impact we made from just building this well. And their families were so impacted by the fact that their children finally had the opportunity to go to school that they started donating their cows to trade for bricks to build this educational institution. I soon encountered my own challenges in getting an education. The economy severely impacted my father's small com computer company, and we lost our health insurance and then our home. I had to take on a full-time job as a waitress, and then I had to go to school full-time as a community college honors student. And when I thought things couldn't get any worse, my father was diagnosed with stage four cancer and was placed in a hospice center. At one point, I wanted to give up and quit school and everything because it was just too much. But I remembered that amidst war, starvation, and disease, the Lost Boys still went to school. And I remember that my father worked to his death so he could ensure me and my brothers would have the best education possible. I couldn't let the Lost Boys down, and I couldn't let my father down. I looked to them both for inspiration and guidance in my darkest hour. In a way, helping the Sudanese has helped me more than I could have ever helped them. From people like them, we can learn important stories that we cannot learn in any other way. Another lesson here is that no matter what your age or circumstance, you can be an agent of change. By simply doing something you love and believe in, you can change the status quo and improve the qualities in this world, whether it be in your community or beyond. In the world today, 400 million people are without clean water. This issue is extremely prevalent in places like Sudan. However, water can change society. With water comes uh, education, opportunity for good health, and opportunity for uh, economic growth. So today, we must ask ourselves, are we just citizens of the United States, or are we citizens of the world? As citizens of the world, we have the opportunity to teach each other and share our stories, but how will we share these stories when people don't even have a voice? As an emerging global world, we cannot thrive in a society where children are forced into slavery and forced into maneuvering AK-47s. We can change this by providing someone with a basic need. Water brings education. Water brings human rights. Water brings us together, and water brings life. Thank you.